Let's get started by taking a look here first at nomenclature. All right, so nomenclature here, again, pretty simple. Right? We're gonna find the longest carbon chain that has that OH group, so it shouldn't be a big surprise, right? It's our functional group. I count that carbon chain, determine the parent stem name, add all, because we're dealing with alcohols, right? Um, and then we assign um, numbers, so we give the alcohol the highest priority. If it's cyclic, you know, give it number one. Um, and we want to add substituent names and look for stereo centers. So let's do some examples. Let's pull this down a little bit. Let's look at a few here together. You'll see it's actually not too bad. All right, so what about this fellow here? So let's put an OH right there. All right, so step number one, longest carbon chain. Well, that's five. So this is definitely going to be a pent, right? And it's an alkane, so it's a pent an, right? And then we number from which side? Well, it's the left that puts the OH at the best position, so it's a pent in to all. And then uh, what is this? Let's figure out R, R, S. So that's your number one, that's your two, that's your three. Well, that's moving around R. Number four is pointing away, so that's the name of this molecule. The old way of numbering, and not numbering, but naming this is R, to pentanol. So either of those will work in this situation. Although it can become easier to put the name in the ending um, on some of the more difficult problems. So let's do one that's a little harder. Well, what if we take that molecule and then do this? Let's put an OH there. All right, guys, so you guys can pause that See if you can figure that out. Um, so looking at this thing here, we still have pent, right? Except now we have a one, two, we have a two ene, right? Two ene, and then that's a two all. When we put that together, we drop this E here. Okay, so then putting that as the name, this would be a pent to in to all. And we're not done yet because we now need to figure out stereochemistry. Now, there's no R and S here, but there's E and Z to consider. So that's your number one. And then over here, that's your number one. So they're on Zusamen side, right? If you remember that, same side. So it's Z. All right, and let's do one more here because we haven't seen um, any rings. So let's take a second and let's look at a ring. So what do you guys get for this? Get your OH in there. So pause it and see if you can figure this thing out. And then let's look at it together now. So it's a cyclo pent. We've got five carbon. Right, and it's an ene. Now that's our number one, and that's two, right? So alcohol gets higher priority. That's your number one. So it's a cyclopent two ene, right? And then you could call it an all if you wanted to, or you could call it a one all. The one's not necessary there, but if you want to put it in, you can. And then, uh, and then let's look at. R or S here. So figuring that out, I'm going to just erase my numbering there. And uh, OH is number one. This side's number two. You got three over there and four is pointing away. So one, two, three. Moving around that direction. That is S. So if you guessed S, you are correct. All right, now. Um, 
there's some common things that come up here, some common nomenclature that we need to know too. So for complicated carbon chains, the OH group is named as a hydroxy group. So what that means is that if there's a higher priority functional group present, then the OH is called a hydroxy group. So let's look at an example of some common names and how we might use something like that. So to get into this, let's first just do a little review here, guys. So I know we're not learning how to name that functional group, but this molecule is something that we probably remember from GChem. It's acetic acid. So carboxylic acids um, end in an ic acid. So that one we all know. So let's look at a different one. What if we did this one? So this molecule has one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a hex. And then we have ic acid. Um, but the way that we add that in together with a formal IUPAC is we add oic acid. So hex and oic acid. So this is two carbons on the side, right? The IUPAC of this is eth and, and then oic acid. It's just that acetic acid's the common name. No one calls it ethanoic acid. All right, so well, what if we took hexanoic acid? So let's just redraw that fellow right over there. So take a second, draw that in. But um, let's put an OH down here at the end. So we still know that it's a hexanoic acid. And the carboxylic acid, we need to remember that COOH group has priority over an OH group. All right. So in our lecture, I think it must have been part one from chapter nine, we had a little table that talked about that. So then one, two, three, four, five, that's a six. So then this is going to be simply six hydroxy, and then that's hexanoic acid. So hex anoic acid. So not too difficult. Now there's some common names that we need to be familiar with here too. Common names. Uh, there's a table on the next page here we'll look at, but you find that longest carbon chain that has the carbon with the OH, you name it as an alka group and you add the word alcohol after it. So let's take a look at the next page and look at a few of these things. So um, methanol is the IUPAC, also known as methyl alcohol. Ethanol is also known as ethyl. Right? One propanol, known as propyl alcohol. Um, two propanol, Isopropyl alcohol, so this is rubbing alcohol. Um, two methyl, one propanol, isobutyl alcohol. Two methyl, two propanol, tert butyl. And two butanol, sec butyl alcohol. So we've seen, I think we've seen isopropyl and um, tert butyl before, but not isobutyl or sec butyl. So those are things you just ought to essentially commit to memory as you uh, proceed through this chapter. All right, guys, now two other things to learn how to name. Um, one is diols, and then the other is um, naming alcohols of um, benzene rings. So for diols, that just means that you have two OH groups, right? So find the longest carbon chain, count the number, write parent, and all that stuff. Um, add the suffix ane, right? This could also be Ene, or it could be ein, depending on what you're dealing with, and then a dash, and then a number for the first alcohol, and a number for the second alcohol, and then the word or diol will be attached to the end. All right, let's look at an example. So let's take this and put uh, let's put two OH molecules. 2OH is on the molecule, I should say. So I think real quickly we can all tell that it's going to be a pent. Right? It's 
pentane, actually. It's an alkane. And that um, we have an alcohol at number two. Right? This is one, and this is two here. Right? So you got a, a one and a two and a three. So then that's going to be a two, three dial. So that's all we do. We just we add those two guys together. So then it's pentane dash two three dash dial. Now we're not done though because there's stereochemistry to consider here. So why don't you guys take a second, see if you can figure that out, and join me back when you've figured out if that's RS. We got a 50-50 chance, so take a guess. All right, so let's take a look at this. So in this case, that's going to be your number one. Okay, let me erase these numbers here because I think they're confusing. That's your number one. This side's your two. That side is your three. So one, two, three, move around that direction. That's an R. So this should be a 2R. Looking over here, there's your number one. That side's your number two. That's your number three. One, two, three. That's still moving in the R direction. H is pointing away from us, so that is a 3R. Put all that together, and that is the name of this molecule. Okay, so last little section to look at here in this lecture is naming phenols. Um, so when we name phenols, um, so well, first of all, this is phenol. Phenol is a benzene ring with an OH group on them. So the common name of that is a phenol. So if we have a di-substituted phenol, that means just two groups on them. The second position of the substituent could be ortho, so we sometimes abbreviate that O. That's at position number two. All right, so that, that would be a one two relationship. Meta would be a one three, because that's the third carbon right there. R cross, right, that's one, two, three, four. That would be para, and sometimes we abbreviate that with a P. So let's do an example, and you'll see this is not too bad. So let's put our OH group over here, and then, uh, and then we'll throw a methyl over on this side. Now, as we see next semester, this, this can be named other ways too. But if we're using phenol as our parent name here, we would use that as our one, that's our two, that's our three. So this is one, three. So one, three is meta. So we could call this meta. This guy over here is a methyl. Methyl phenol, that would be perfectly fine. This could also be called M methyl phenol. And then if we wanted to, we could also call this 3 methyl phenol. So many choices, and they're all correct. So you need to be familiar with the O, M, and the P. Um, because it's used in problems and when they're describing reactants and stuff like that.